Hello folks, you may have met me in another channel where I share my lectures in law and medical law. This is my separate channel dedicated to the exuberance of cooking and challenging the most discriminating palates. This is my very first episode. My son and I live in a two-story town home in a nice location in Atlanta with gardens on both sides. My son is a phenomenal gourmet. He can achieve incredible meals with a few simple tricks. For instance, just by combining the pecan praline on the cremant cheese, he made this sublime dessert. Pantry is the most favorite part of my kitchen. I've installed this moonlight inside. So here we are welcoming you to our small kitchen. As you see, the space is limited but enough for two of us to work and create at the same time without inconveniencing each other. We are going to move, so this is a temporary place. Now, let me introduce a few household basics of My Way Kitchen. Number 1. I don't work with recipes. I don't follow any recipe. I just look what I have in the freezer or pantry, make my mind and work creatively with reasonable combination of ingredients. In other words, I don't like sameness. Next, I am a technical minimalist. I have so many kitchenware equipment tools in overwhelming numbers, but rarely indeed I use them as I do not like to generate grease. So when it comes to whisking an egg, I just grab a fork instead of mixer or whisker or when I have to chop a garlic, instead of using all these kinds of choppers, I just do it by knife. Here we go. I hope you know that crushing garlic before missing it is important. That's how the Allison is released. I must confess, I have two favorite tools though. This one is for clam chowder and this one is multi-purpose. It's a spatula, it's a veggie peeler and parmesan flaker. Love it. The third rule, my kitchen is cosmopolitan, a mixture of French, Swedish, Middle East, Mesopotamian and Macedonian kitchens. So expect a lot of interesting ideas. Next rule 4, we are omnivores. So expect a lot of red meat, game, seafood dishes and vegan delight. Lastly, unlike the other cooks who televise the making of one dish per episode, I will cook in front of you the entire menu per episode. Under a menu, I mean at least the three mandatory servings, the appetizer, the entree and the dessert. Usually menu is more than that, as it has drink, salad, second entree or nut box, so I will show those two if there is time or room for extra. What I will guarantee each time are the three servings, the appetizer, entree and dessert. Now let's get started. Today's menu. Appetizer will be anchovy ramule on home-baked crackers. Entree will be creamy leek soup with oyster mushrooms, uplurot, lentils and other secret weapons I will show you later. Dessert will be drunken watermelon sorbet. Time for the appetizer. My son and I often substitute bread with crackers as a weight watching method. As you see, I also bake bread, like I baked this baguette last night. But more often we stick to the crackers as a good weight watching practice. If you make a sandwich with a cracker instead of a toasted bread, you will keep your stomach volume smaller. Of many obesity forms, some are strictly neurological, whereby a person feels a dire need to eat not because of the chemical hunger, but rather for filling the stomach up to dilation. You may have heard about surgical reversal of obesity as a last resort. Surgical reduction of the pyloric stomach is a type of bariatric surgery. And here is where the cracker concept works. Now let's compare these crackers I bought from the groceries for this presentation. The prices range from $1 to $6 per package. 
This one, Greta, with olive oil and oregano, is from the Dollar Tree store and it costs just $1.420 grams of crackers. This one is La Parzanella. This particular box is with rosemary crocantini, although there are other versions like plain or with roasted garlic. Costs $5.470 grams. Farhook's organic crackers come in the varieties with sea salt or flax or garlic and thyme and each box costs $6.456 grams of crackers. So this one is quite pricey, isn't it? This raises the question, why not to bake crackers at home? For the dough, I use this pure glass tray, which formerly was my son's lunchbox six years ago. The size is perfect for our family of two. For controlling the size of bread we consume per day. And I bake every third day. There goes one chicken egg or three quail eggs, whatever you have. This, this, no, let's just grab the fork. Next comes pollen, yes, the bee pollen, an immunity booster and the source of multivitamins and antioxidants. I always use pollen in baking. Here I also add yes, not because I expect spongy texture in crackers, but rather for that special bread taste. I add maple syrup instead of sugar and I add sea salt. I crush it. I don't use the refined iodized salt and in order to maintain my iodine level, I consume a lot of seafood and walnuts. Next, thick cream or whole milk. I will explain my reasoning in the forthcoming episodes. It's another long conversation olive oil or sunflower oil or avocado oil water i use unbleached wheat flour but for crackers i also use almond and flax seed flour i will not add those now only after the dough is mature and ready cover with plastic wrap to block the oxygen and to facilitate fermentation and let it rest for two or three hours I'm going to add small cubes of butter, but not now because I don't want the butter melt and incorporate to the dough, ruining the fermentation. The dough is ready. Let's add flax seed and almond flowers. Install cubes of butter to have that caves form from the melting of the butter. Place on the tray. Glaze the surface with simple water, not egg yolks, not oil just single water for creating the film on the surface that will turn pink because of the gluten formation. Ah, oh, smells terrific. You know, there are around 300 varieties of thyme, but I much love this piperella thyme. Now sprinkle with thyme leaves, sea salt, sesame seed, poppy seeds. I love these chacha sunflower seeds. I have addiction to those. This plain, unsalted version comes in olive packages. It's time to cut. Use either plain or zigzag wedges, whatever you want. Oven 375 Fahrenheit or 191 Celsius, 25 minutes. Ready. You can use the crackers as sandwiches or soup croutons or snacks. And now let's make the ramulette to complete our appetizer. I have here three cans of wild caught anchovies, plain non spicy. Each can is 56 grams. I must say that not everybody likes anchovies because of that heavy saltiness. So we have to dilute it for our page. Yet a dairy and fish combination is not a good idea for digestion. Therefore, I'm ruling out sour cream or cheese. I don't like mayonnaise either. Then what can I use as a substitute for the base? Avocado, my ultimate solution for perfect fish page. Here go three cans of anchovies, two avocados. Let's spice it up at this stage. Let me share my secret. Inside of this pepper grinder is more than just black pepper. In the equal proportions, I have coriander seeds, whole allspice seeds, the dried unripe berry of pimenta, and black pepper. By grinding all three together, I save time and also reduce the pepper's spiciness by two-thirds. 
At this stage, the incomplete page tastes bitter and nutty. For preserving the avocado color and also for improving the taste, I add one freshly squeezed lemon juice, about a quarter of fresh papaya. The fish was oily, so I'm not going to add any oil. Instead, I'm adding these fantastic fresh pine seeds, which are perfect for a pig. About 70 grams. Then I will add fresh greens, basil, dill, oregano, coriander, a lot of spinach, which by the way pairs well with pine seeds, and a clove of garlic. Lastly, I will add pomegranate seeds, and even more, pitted cherries, if you will. Ready! Spread on the crackers and enjoy it at any time, be that in breakfast, lunch, brunch, or supper. Alternatively, you can replace the ramulet with this fabulous Cremont cheese or Amish blue cheese. Whatever you do, don't forget the mint tea. Let's cook the entree, which will be creamy leek soup, with my modifications. I'm going to amend the soup with things I much like, lentils and oyster mushrooms. Le plus rot. It's fair to say that I like all varieties of lentils. Right now, I have only two types of lentils at home. French lentils and the more common brown lentils. While the French lentils assimilate well with duck or goat stews, I'm choosing these regular brown lentils for my soup for their fulfilling richness in taste. Lentils are already pre-cooked as they need more time to break up the protein. As for the wild foraged food, I mean mushrooms, I hate champignons. I prefer oyster mushrooms for many reasons. They taste fabulous, buttery. They are found in deciduous hardwoods, growing on the tree trunks, aspen or beech trees, or rotting logs, in cleaner conditions than those in the case of earth mushrooms. Oyster mushrooms get nourished by killing the little worms and bacteria on the dying tree logs, the source of their nitrogen. By the way, viewers' discretion is advised in considering one mushroom over another, Although it is believed that oyster mushrooms do not have poisonous types, still you are responsible for your own choices. As I am using mushrooms for creamy leek soup, I first need to make the mushroom stock. For that, I am separating the mushroom caps from the stems to use the stems for the stock. Oyster mushrooms come in diverse forms. Pearl oyster, blue oyster, elm, golden, pink, phoenix oyster, king oyster, my sample consists of three types, phoenix oysters, elm oysters, and king oysters. The later king oysters will go to the stock almost entirely. As you see, I have two types of onions, American yellow potato onion and my favorite red or purple onion. For the stock, I will use potato onions, and for the base of the soup, I will saute red onion. In making the stock, both a bay leaf, green apples, celeron greens, including fresh parsley, basil, oregano, dill, and of course parsnip, a perfume institution, by smell and by taste. Parsnip is a root vegetable closely related to the family of carrots and parsley. I use it almost in every soup and stew. Basil. Each time I smell basil, my mind travels back to my paternal grandma's amazing garden. Not only my grandma Natalia had hectares of garden and vineyards on rich plain land, but also breathtaking orchids with pomegranates, apricots, cherries, six types of plums, white and black mulberries. If it wasn't a nursery heaven, then what was that? A time-saving tip, though. Apply a tiny drop of oil as it forms a film that covers the water surface and blocks the evaporation. Bring to boil for some 12 minutes. Mash the solid mass.
filter the liquid The mushroom stock is ready. Now let's saute the soup base. A soup must be aesthetically appealing, therefore I do not saute parsley peel. I already use the root veggies in the store. Here I only saute red onions, the mushroom cups as the stems were used in the stock and the wick itself, the crowning glory of this soup. Seasoned with my favorite trio, freshly ground allspice, coriander and black pepper. For those who like it spicy, I recommend chili peppers. I have dried chili which I green myself with a simple coffee grinder. Toss it well. Leek is from the family of alliums. It requires a thorough cleaning, slice by slice, to avoid soil-borne infections, including toxoplasmosis. To wash leek properly, you have to trim the roots and tops, then slice or dice, swish in a bowl of cold water, then lift the slices up with your hands or a skimmer, leaving dirt or grit behind. Do it as much as needed until you have visually clean residual water. Add the pre-cooked lentils. the mushroom stock and a pint of heavy cream or whole milk. Cook about 15 to 20 minutes, bring it to boil, add fresh coriander and dill. Ready! Whether you like it to serve in a tacky ceramic bowl or in the Churchill Squad or Willow Blue Queen China, it looks and tastes fantastic. Enjoy! Time for dessert. Making a watermelon sorbet is very simple. It does not require an ice cream machine. Slice the watermelon. Then dice it into fairly equal cubes. On the way, remove the seeds as much as you can. Arrange the cubes on a white plate and put them to freeze overnight. Now, I already have frozen cubes from yesterday. I'm gonna blend them. But prior to blending, I will add one freshly squeezed lemon juice, about one and a half tablespoon of honey or maple syrup. I use raw honey. What I have at home are acacia honey and manuka honey. Which one to choose? Of course, acacia honey, that the lightest possible raw honey, and also my favorite, appropriate for a sorbet. A quarter of pepino melon, otherwise known as pear melon or bush melon, actually it belongs to the family of nightshades, along with okra, 
Sierra, tomato, Irish potato, eggplant, pepper, gooseberry, goji berry, curry, sorrel, but it's sweet. Then I will slowly add rum or scotch or wine. Sensibly, white wine is the right choice over red wine. Usually, my favorite whites are Pinot and Chardonnay, but for dessert, Moscato is the best choice. Moscato is a classic dessert wine. This is the right texture for a sorbet. You can eat it right away or put it back to the freezer for later times. Okay, let's scoop it now. Here I show different bowls for the variety of dressing workshop. I'm going to dress the dessert with something green, rich green, to bring back the watermelon's precious contrast of pink and green colors. What about kiwi or fresh mint leaves? If you have neither at home, you can decorate with green matcha tea powder, put the powder on the rim of your bowl or glass. For that, you have to pour the matcha powder on a plate. Then take a quarter of lime or lemon and slide over the rim of the bowl. Meantime, twist the bowl while you are squeezing the lime or lemon over the rim. Turn the glass or bowl and press it down onto the powder on the plate. That's it. Don't forget the green drink, which is very simple to make. Just add white wine, a bit of matcha powder and blended ice cubes. It's time to indulge to the cool and natural flair. Bon. Des chansons. On espère. 